Well, thank you for your presentation. Thank you, everyone, also to attend the lecture. It's an honor, <laughs> and it's also a difficult task. I don't belong to the academia in any sense. I belong, I teach here, but the research I do is mainly from the practice. From the practice in a country, Galicia, with a lot of limitations, but with a lot of culture and the built from, with a lot of craft, with a lot of traditions, and with uh, also a good kind of materials. But it's an advantage. It's what they're trying to use for in my work. In the presentation, I prepared something based in two projects that have been awarded recently in the Spanish, you know. And there are two public projects, very small, very small projects. But they are dealing with several aspects that I think are important in my work. And in a way, they're not statements, but they're kind of thoughts. I would say thoughts, not statements. And it's about how to make public space, public space. And it's why I choose the title called the red carpet, <laughs> because I think the most basic public space is a carpet. Um, let me see if this works. Yeah. These are the two projects uh, have been awarded. <coughs> one, one is a bench. <laughs> it's a bench in a spe special place. It's a bench next to a park, a natural park. The other one is an intervention in El Camino. Camino is the Santiago Camino. The way goes through in the industrial areas and how, in a way, to mark them, mark them, how to define them. And then, in all these projects, they deal with texture, with, a, with texture a lot. They, they deal with matter, with the tonics, and they deal with craft, human labor. <coughs> In my work is quite fundamental, because the place where we are, no? in Galicia. And I think all of that tries to build some kind of identity, local identity, based in the character of the place, but based on the character of the construction. And that, in a way, try to make roots. And what is the projects are about, trying to have roots with the place. Um, uh, the red carpet red is carpet an interesting, interesting. <laughs> I like the idea, I like the, idea. the red carpet. <laughs> it's a very old it's concept. Very old concept. <laughs> it actually comes it from comes the first the reference, first reference, written reference, is from the from play, the Agamemnon play, 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 from the Greek play, Greek play. Uh, five, five centuries before Christ. Um, he, refer he, refers he refers to, to the red carpet, the red like, carpet a like a place, place for God. For God. No? No? Um, like a place, it's a way to mark a place without changing it. It's a way to mark, to define uh, a sacred place without destroying it, without even altering them. And I think that is quite sophisticated, and still today, nobody has been able to match it. <laughs> we can print 3D constructions to go to Mars, but nothing so sophisticated is still like a red carpet. Huh? The red carpet has been banalized because um, the secular realm, because Hollywood, because, but in reality comes even from the Aztecas, where they were using uh, these natural pigments to produce something completely different. No? It was rare, it was very difficult to make, because it was only defined, was only possible through these insects, the cochineal, the cochineal, they, <coughs> they are only grow in a cactus. Then they have to be collected, they have to be dry, and is the the cascar from the from the from the, from the wife or from the wife from the from the woman from the feminine insect that is grass and make a uh, pigment. No? Then it's very difficult to make this way to make uh, a carpet is special. No? Um, <coughs> well, it's 
very collected. And this is why I think is what I was trying to make, explain. Uh, special carpet, a red, or, or in this case, a Turkish carpet, can make a sacred place, can define a sacred place, or a place of recognition in the middle of Manhattan, no? in the middle of an airport. It's just with this definition of a limit, without changing it, <coughs> with the right orientation, you, you have a temple. Hmm? And it's the most sustainable <coughs> element you can make, because it can be unfolded, can be unfolded, can be moved away, and nothing has been alterated. But you make a huge, important temple. No? <coughs> Um, temple, in a way, is defined from <coughs> the Romans like a cutoff, no? Like a cutoff. It's more like, but in this case, uh, the red carpet of the public space that we would like to show is more than cutoffs, so it has more marks in, on the field, no? Marks on the field that try to introduce not always the texture, not always the color, but, but the texture involved in a carpet, no? But it's a grid where different type of threads, <coughs> vertical and horizontal, make something quite complex, quite complex and quite sophisticated in terms of representation, usually in terms of representation of, of God, no? of the paradise. No? It was a, the most simple <coughs> basic way to be transported. Hmm? It's, it's kind of a uh, metaphor of a place where you're not, you are not, but a place where you would like to be, no? place of God. <coughs> um, usually represents um, the perfection, tries to the traditional carpets try to represent uh, God. In a way, God is a perfect geometrical uh, definition. In a way, perfection is reproduced with symmetries. No? Well, this is the other thing I would like to talk is the idea of comfort, like in a way, uh, the modern comfort is more like a physical comfort. Uh, in, I think in a way has destroyed the idea of, of the temple, of the idea that it's more important the psychological comfort than the physical comfort. No? And that has alterated the definition of private space a lot no? with all these machines with all these air conditions, with all these wall-to-wall -wall floors, <coughs> with all these elements that try to make more of a space uh, uh, a comfort uh, area for the body. Hmm? And now <coughs> I would like to talk about some ideas of public space, what I think were well, between this painting from Peter Bruegel, where the plaza, the public space, is basically a market, a market where people uh, collapse, people interact with others in a way, no formal, no? Completely chaotic in a way, but there's a lot of uh, life. And the place itself is, doesn't have more definition than the limits, no? In contraposition, <coughs> with the idea of Kiriko, no? George de Kiriko, where basically the public space is a place where the architecture deals with a building, deals with the other. And it's more important the limits, actually the life, no? Kind of metaphysical, but also a definition of a different type of public space. But <coughs> For me, uh, the one I like the most is, is the idea from, from this Giacometti's squares. No? He has a different type of uh, sculptures that they're all called squares, built in the 50s. Um, <clears throat> they have this strong base. It's not a carpet, it's a carpet. It's a carpet with basically with a lot of foundations, very thick, very heavy. I think gives uh, the sense of um, security or safety. If the persons are free to walk, to move, but the space feels safe. And I think it's with 
the, I use here a direct translation from the carpet. From the carpet, we move to a public space is where the floor, uh, how it's built, how it's defined, is the basic element. No? The Kiriko and his village were all half these constructions also quite strong. No? And in terms of representation, I think probably it's the Noli map, no? Is uh, in terms of representation, the Noli map introduced the idea of public is like part of, so of some private buildings, mostly temples, no? He introduced arcades, he defines plazas, and he defines the interior of the temples like part of the public, no? Uh, I think so far is probably in terms of mapping, uh, quite still the most sophisticated one, no? But it's, it's more about uh, the definition of privacy, no? And public. It's very sophisticated, no? Sometimes it's a lintel, sometimes it's, it's just an element on the floor, no? It's quite... It's, this map, the only map, has been used until the middle of last century, no? still quite used in Rome. No? Uh, for me, it's very interesting. No? Also, the idea <coughs> of the knot, no? the Semper refers to like, the first element of architecture. And I think, in a way, it is. No? If, if, in, this, in this discourse of the carpet, the safe floor, <coughs> and the knot is very basic because it's not material in the knot. It's just geometry. And this geometry defines uh, a different element of significance, you know, I think. No? This is, for example, a very basic <coughs> carpet, one of the most basic carpets. This wave, I think it's called the plain wave. No? It's made with leaves. No? It's made with leaves. And it's, again, it's a grid where basically the, the person make an intersections. And at the end, defines a surface. No? Usually, in this case, is an element to sleep on the top. No, but again, it's the knot, and the knot is what make an element, a surface that defines uh, an space. No, an space. No, um, <coughs> and why waving? No, waving is one of the oldest uh, crafts we have. No. And it's a very complex type of skill to have, no? It's also very <coughs> labor intense where the vertical elements has to be under tension and the horizontals are th driving through with a needle with, called the shuttle, no? And it's very intensive in terms of labor and it's also very old, no? Here we, it's one of the most basic looms. This is what is called the backstrap loom, where the person use their own weight to give the tension to for the vertical ones to be stressed, and then with the needle to be able to make the fabric, no? The fabric. Is they have horizontals, they have verticals, it's very labor intense, no? Some of the Turkish or Persian carpets, it takes 10, 12 years to be able to make it. No? And depending on the type of material, can be more or less sophisticated in terms of the waving. No? Just a thick sack or <coughs> overlaps can be quite, quite elaborated. No? Introducing also <coughs> the colors in the nuts. No? You have the fabric and then you have the knots where basically is introduced the color that is part of the of the scheme, no? Slow. Stop. It has to stop. Yeah. Well, this is the idea where Carpets is the geometry is the fundamental element. It's more than the material. It's the geometry, and it's the geometry which makes an element of, of, of symbolic element in a carpet. No, 
could be the color, but basically the most fundamental is, is this. No? This is the simple vertical elements and the horizontal. The, it's also metaphorical, has a lot of symbolism, <coughs> the waving. No? In fact, uh, the top one is called the heaven, the heaven, the paradise, and the bottom one is called the earth. And the people, <coughs> the person who's waving, in a way, is 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 fabricating a life, huh? or building his own life. No? Some carpets like this one it takes uh, uh, ten, twelve years. Huh? Um, usually are symmetrical, and usually represents, especially the Persian ones, <coughs> the the idea of God or the idea of paradise. Huh? Very labor intensive. And I think this idea of carpet you know, is very present in European type of uh, public spaces, you know? Italian ones. In, and when the idea also that the carpet is not just a surface, a flat element, it's an element where there are tectonic, tectonics, but it's also a lot of uh, fabric, a lot of uh, geometries that define the character of. of of the carpet, no? it's not just only a plain open space where there are human activities, but it's also a place of s metaphorical symbolism. And now I'm going to <coughs> present the three projects. I, I will try to be quick. This, uh, I think, related with this idea of public space, the idea of the carpet. This is an exhibition that we did in, in, the, <coughs> in the city of culture, like seven years ago already by Eisman, where he has the Museum the, for Art um, <clears throat> on that building here. This is the museum, this is uh, the library, and the site is the periodical library. No? Um, this is an unfinished project, but still uh, a very difficult project to make uh, an exhibition because because the complexity of the geometry is not his. Eisman defines these grids in what he called the tartan, the tartan type of grid. One is, is, they are both structural, one supports the slaves, oh sorry, the slabs, the other one supports the roof in the top. No? One earth is thicker than the other. And this presence of the grid um, and the presence of, of the space is incredible in the scale. No? Incredible is scale, quite complex. In, it's very difficult to make an exhibition here. This is a museum, for example, I don't know if you see it, because here maybe we can, can move it. Uh, there is a chair there. There is a chair. The chair is, is a, actually it's a stool. It's quite big. But in this space, it becomes nothing. It's impossible. The light is completely uh, no control. The, I mean, the artificial light is so high. And the strong light, naturally, is, is very strong. And is, to make a exhibition here is not easy. Then we have to make a exhibition for <coughs> 50 chairs. Um, I was called from the forest to the, to the furniture, from the forest to the chairs. The 50 chairs designed by 50 Galician designers and architects, no? and representation of the Galician forest. No? Then, <coughs> The task was difficult, and we designed to make what it is. This is the space I just showed. And we make this carpet to present the chairs. Uh, the carpet has at the end a big knot, which was kind of auditorium. <laughs> um, all the elements were done with these pieces that was 10 by 10 by 10 cubes of pine, Galician pine produced by a local factory from the same city, uh, with the idea to make a, a carpet that can be removed, but to make a, like the red carpet, to separate it, to lift it, and even physically, the chairs from, from, from the ground, and to give them their own space. Huh? Different heights, trying to make a pattern, but uh, with the idea of at the end having a final. And this is the final knot <coughs> where the carpet ends. It's like place to meet, to meet supposedly to, to receive explanations or to, 
to understand to yeah by the curators well to meet with people no? this is the construction all with the same element this is a 10 by 10 pine lock no? <coughs> this is great and this is the result no it's basically uh, very simple no? it's just cutting 10 by 10s and different heights i made trying to make kind of a pattern where <coughs> the maximum height is 450 gets the height of of, of a chair, and all the different elements have different positions regarding to to this height. No? Then this is the carpet before doing the installation, no? before introducing the chairs. No? And here is the final result, <coughs> where basically different chairs occupy different points with a graphic on the floor. Uh, in this difficult space, in very difficult space, we try to make uh, another a carpet. Uh, it's not a red carpet in the sense it's not red, <laughs> but it's treated in the same way. We try to make a symbolic <coughs> homenage to these chairs, to the designers. So, yeah, no? This is more or less the strategy, no? The strategy, the result. This is the chair <coughs> that we saw in the first photo next to the window, no? It looked very small. Here, <coughs> at least has a frame, no? kind of its own space. Installation. And there was also other type of chairs that were designed by what we call the pioneers in Galicia. No? <coughs> the pioneers were three designers uh, in the 50s and the 40s were trying to design Galician furniture. And then we, we, we thought that it would be necessary to make a different type of carpet in a way to to also to make um, more clear ominous to these three designers. I huh? may make something also quite simple. <coughs> it's basically, this is by Isaac Diaz Pardo, the Silla Anthropomorphica, Anthropo Anthropomorphic Chair. Isaac Diaz Pardo is the, <coughs> was the designer, one of the directors of Sargadelos, one of the best, or the, or the few, <laughs> design industrial companies that we have in Galicia in the last century. And then <coughs> this structure is quite simple. It's basically a grid, another, another grid, another carpet. In this case, we have the excuse <coughs> to be able to paint, not the floor, but uh, another floor that we make on the top of the, of the marble, painted in black. And then we make these two grids of superposing, overlapping uh, lines. You know? And then moving them, to the position where each chair has its own support, no? uh, quite free. It was, it's, you know, you move the lines and you have the place where you can put a chair. It's not, not so difficult. Okay, and this is the element of the carpet, no? trying to make bales, <coughs> bales to define uh, entrance or to define different, more than entrance, was different spaces inside this museum that was overwhelming. <laughs> the museum is very interesting, but it uh, could be something else <laughs> because it's kind of difficult. Uh, this is the result. Well, this is the <coughs> auditorium, the final knot. And this is the public space and the final carpet. No? I have a video, it's short. Eh? But I think a video explains the three-dimensional character of the exhibition more than it was made by the City of Culture. No? There's tables, paintings related to forests in this case, to, and the carpet with all these places. No? I think you're going to have the chance to go tomorrow. It's an interesting project, but has been so... I mean, it's, it's very unfair because uh, he couldn't finish it, no? Uh, he can, Iceman only finished four buildings of six. And in reality, were seven. His competition proposed seven buildings. And they cut one, and they only built four. And the city is not a city. It's just, <laughs> you will see it. It's quite sad. It's sad because, it's, it's sad not only because it's an unfinished project. It's because a national project. 
the scale has been very criticized because the budget. Nobody criticizes other budgets. No? Stadiums for Barcelona, Madrid. <laughs> Nobody criticizes and double the price, double the cost. But city of culture uh, got into this political battle and has been destroyed. And now it's an unfinished project. It's the, the worst condition for any project and the worst condition for any country. To have a big cultural project that's not finished. Nobody says anything because because a lot of reasons I, I want to get. And this, <coughs> this is another project. <coughs> this is actually, it's a parking lot. <laughs> it's a parking lot in a very special place. It's the <coughs> northern tip of the peninsula Iberica, the northern. And it's a lighthouse, and they have uh, what here we call parking leda, or park <laughs> uh, casual parking, and we try to make uh, a more decent parking. Again, we try to make a carpet. No more than a carpet. Um, but I like to refer to this project, to this test, a text by Utsum. When he won the Sydney competition, he tried. He wrote a beautiful test, very short, uh, in Zodiac about platforms and plateaus, and how important for him it was to be able to build a platform that he refers to to the Mexican platforms, like a way to be in between the trees, no? to be at the same level, to elevate yourself, to be, to make a temple just to change in the position, no? with a lifted carpet, in a way. No? Uh, he made this beautiful drawing, so he refers to this, to this point no? in Yucatan, where they cut a whole hill to make, to make a, <coughs> a, a city. No, but the cut I like, use 200 by 200 square meter, 200 meters long. And now I'm trying to explain also why uh, this is the general geological map of Europe. No, and Galicia here is uh, with the northern of Portugal. Is one with um, Scotland and Finland. Is where the few places where it's basically granite. You have granite. We are a granite culture. Hmm? We built everything. You see, this is the core. Until Porto, part of Leon, Galicia is basically a granite uh, wall. And that uh, has implied a lot of from the built from culture and also, I think, on the whole, whole culture of the place. No? We built in granite because we have it, because it's available, and because also has. I think personally has a, <coughs> a meaning of last. Granite is an eternal material. Like any other, <coughs> very few materials can say could be eternal, could last forever. And granite has this condition. No? And here, people like to build forever. They don't want to be something to move. They like to build for the next generations. And that implies a lot in terms of the culture of the build form. And I think also in the terms of personal culture in Galicia and northern Portugal. I think we are the same, or at least very similar. No? Um, you see, we have <coughs> just <cabate> you <laughs> a little bit, and you have granite everywhere, a very good granite. And it's just a guy with uh, <coughs> a drill uh, taking granite. No? And that implies a lot. No? I mean, this is a mill, a water mill in a abandoned rural area. And this is a piece of art, no? because all these pieces, you see, this piece is three-dimensional built. It's not, it's not just asler, rectangular. It's, it's three-dimensional, meaning it has one front, move, and turns. There's no joints. This is a whole piece. I mean, to, or this other one, no? Or this other one. There's no joints. The, the piece. When somebody in a rural area tried to build something so complex in terms of geometry, in terms of materiality, in terms of labor, because to make one of these pieces is very labor consuming. I mean, <clears throat> you have to be quite skilled, but also you have to this idea of trying to build something to last. No? And that implies a lot in, in Galician culture. No? This is we're not too far from there. It's a small harbor. But again, the pieces are 
is fabricated. The pieces are making another type of carpet. You know? In this case, it's in stone, but it's with the same type of idea, in the interconnecting geometries. Huh? But this is Santiago. No, it's everywhere, everywhere. Santiago, if you have a chance, you will see it. No? And this is the, the location. <coughs> this was a parking lot. You see the paths. <laughs> it's abandoned. Um, we have to make a space. On the, well, the commission was to make a parking lot. And then we make something. This is how it looks. It's, this is in a very strong lift in the northern tip of Spain, of Peninsula Iberica. This is the parking lot how it was before. No? The lighthouse is here and ends on a, you see, ends on the tip. Here was a kind of a tower to make acoustic signals. And this is the proposal, it's basically a granite carpet with uh, an edge. An edge was trying to limit the space for the cars no? or trying to give some safety to the place for people with <coughs> they were driving and parking there. And this was one of the demolitions. It was uh, one, it's very interesting how this unused acoustical tower <coughs> that was next to the lighthouse, we could demolish it. <laughs> and the idea, we demolish it and with, with all the left broken pieces, at the end, we make a kind of uh, sitting platform to look, but with nothing else than just the platform. Just grass and very simple, no? because it was in the tip of the of the cliff. And this is the proposal, the different edges, depending on the position. This is a road that goes to the lighthouse. It was a leftover <coughs> stone that was founded. And this is basically the project. This is the carpet here with an edge that gives limits and gives safety to for the parking, you know? more or less complicated geometry, but all built in in granite, no, in granite with a lot of labor, but with the idea that this will last forever, but also with the idea of the carpet, because this <coughs> the good thing about pavers is they are based on sand, no, they don't need even concrete. You can put them, <coughs> if you frame them, they don't move. By you remove the frame, you can take them away. No marks, nothing. You can remove them and use them in any other place because it's granite. Huh? Well, the construction, the labor. I like to, well, a lot of details, you know, complicated. A very skilled people. I mean, these stonemasons, those cantaros, huh? so skilled. They move towns, very heavy elements. Huh? Um, they cut it perfectly and they put it. They put it perfectly. No? It's just with the help of a small crane, nothing else. And then, at the end, this is kind of a sign. Different elements. At the end, the carpet with the with the border. No? Nothing too complicated, but with this idea of making a public space without making build forms or without making objects. No? So, so something that I hate is to have public space with benches, with uh, you know, beans, with street lamps, with whatever. At the end, they only occupy the public space. No? This is a short video game. It has music, but I don't know, it's missing. But it's the cliff, no? so powerful, the, the coaster. No? Uh, and then in the edge of the cliff is the edge of the carpet and it's also the edge for the parking lot and there also was the idea sorry the idea of this area this space it was for handicap not because they're going to be able to sit but they're going to be able to come and stay here and to enjoy the view because the rest of the area is is completely impossible for handicap because it's completely uneven. It's completely impossible to move. <coughs> then 
This edge was the limit for the parking, a place to sit, but a place for the ha handicap to be able to, to enjoy with in a safety condition and not an inferior condition to enjoy the character of the place. No? There's, no, there's no much. The coast is quite strong, no? And the elements. And this, oops, sorry. And this is, well, sorry, let me show you. Uh, well. No, I miss it. Well, was I wanted to show. I thought I saw it, but maybe I missed it. Well, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, and the last project is also a carpet. It's Pedra It's another strong location next to the coast again. And next to a, a national park is uh, Corrubedo National Park. Is is. Um, in this project, I would like to talk about the Kinchugi <laughs> type of philosophy, where basically the mistakes are part introducing part of the, the final design. Hmm? The mistakes, more than mistakes, what well, could be the mistakes, the accidents. Huh? This technique by the Japanese, where a piece is broken <coughs> and they'll seal it, they seal it with uh, gold leaves, no? it's sealed with gold. Then the crack becomes. It's not a pattern, but it's, in a way, it's a reproduction of human factor, of human condition, human natural accident. No? And in this project, there was a lot of accidents. There was a lot of accidents in, during construction. No? This is the lookout place that they have. And the commission was, uh, we have to improve it in a way. The first idea they gave us was, uh, if we can cover with wood, wouldn't look so bad. If you make a wood tower, probably could be okay. But the <clears throat> the place is so strong that we propose again to to demolish it. No, this is the original condition: a staircase that goes to the top of the rock, the frog, and from there you see the ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, the national park, um, and the <clears throat> the beaches not too far. No, you see. It was also an informal, casual parking parking lot, and this kind of lookout point. And then the proposal was again to clean it. No, we just clean it, we destroy everything. Um, <clears throat> to make another carpet. In this case, was a carpet with again with an edge. In this case, were an edge was probably more solid because the cliff was. Also strong, it was very occupable by a lot of people. No? Um, here's the process: no? how these three old men manage with a crane pieces that mm, are so heavy, like two tons. No? This is you see the shade. No? This is the stone. This was the accident, no? because the, all of this, if you remember the first photo, all of this was covered with sand, with soil. Cars were parking in the top. Then we, when we demolish the, the staircase that was here, we also we clean the site. And when we clean the site, we find out there was all this natural escape made with natural rocks. And it was so beautiful. <clears throat> and we said, well, we cannot make nothing here. It was the original project. And then we have to move the benches or the sitting areas to the edge again of the area and we left and we left <coughs> the the rocks uh, clean like we found them no? again it's very similar no? it's different <coughs> it's an edge and a carpet a carpet with an edge no? more or less built with again with incredible skilled people them with almost you know just is uh, a small crane moving heavy stones. You, you cannot believe it until you see it. It's completely impossible. They move heavy stones just to, let's say, we're going to dance with them. <laughs> we make them dance. And this is how they make them. They make them rotate and then they put them in place. 
is is incredible skill. This is the edge. This is a path to the top with a small crane, and this is the carpet with the edge. No. Okay. Again, there was accidents no? because all these joints were not exactly it was the same. But it was not possible. I mean, who has the courage to ask them to redo this after you saw to all men to put to move to stones that are two tons heavy? No, is well, it's part of the accent. All these cracks, it's good. Nothing, nothing to to complain. I mean, the stairs that go <coughs> and this grid that you know, we try to relate, no, similar to where the lines, <coughs> the joints, trying to make a grid and related to horizontally and vertically. They are all related. Um, <coughs> and these guys, they managed to do it perfectly. Is uh, different edges, different places to sit. Also, the place was a place to look out to the ocean, but also a place where <coughs> you will start a path to walk or to a Celtic settlement, the settlement that is in the top of the hill, or to the beaches that are just two kilometers away downhill. No, you see the coast and the frog. No, the frog stone. Rockstone. And then all these patterns built, no? Ah, this is the second phase of this project. We finished this project and was so popular in terms of attraction of tourists that uh, it was the same problem again. It's, everything was uneven. For a handicap was difficult. <coughs> and then they asked us to make something for handicap. And they asked us to make uh, something next to this pine. Tree because it was a straight path to to it. No, it was how it was. It was a pine tree where it have a nice view because it's the only point where you can see the park, not only the ocean, also the park. And then uh, after finishing this project, they asked us to make this other project, basically a path, a bench, and a place for handicap to feel safe. Oops, oops, uh, with the oops, a video here. Sorry, no, it's not. We can see later. <coughs> you see the path, but incredible coast, no? This is Corrubedo Park, where Chipperfield lives somewhere here now. Um, this is the beach, incredible, two kilometers. Um, Ribeira is not too far from here. And there is a Celtic settlement in the back, where the drone it is now, in the top of the hill. And this was the bench, also trying to uh, make the grids, huh? trying to make the knots and the grids together, uh, the red carpet. And this is the place where ends the handicap um, <coughs> handles the railing and in a way has a safety place to, to enjoy the view, like the others. Huh? Here it is, the, the railing for the handicap. Huh? Um, I think now is a short video too, and we finish. This is the frog stone, no? It's a railing the top just to, for safety, and then the, this is the bench where you arrive, is a meeting point. And then the lookout place, not in the top, but not in the bottom of the stone. And the stone becomes central, no? Very powerful. Yeah. In a way, all these projects are between carpets and frames. Mm. They don't want to have any presence, but they want to mark or define, no mark, because everything can be removed. It's so easy, you just take it away. It's not, there are no cuts, there are no cuts, no destruction. And I think is 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 the, the lesson from the red carpet, <laughs> how to make a temple how to make something not a temple, like so how to define a public uh, with dignity space without making things, just to give in the character of the joints, character of the tectonics, and character of the materials that we have, and the texture. No? I agree that space and time is fundamental, but I think matter, tectonics, um, <coughs> and texture 
is from the human body also fundamental. Um, <clears throat> when you have a culture like we have, where the tectonic is the feeling of the stone is so present in any small chapel, in any small watermill, <clears throat> uh, you have to to learn from that. It's not a lesson from the future, but we have to recognize that it's something that we cannot forget. It's something we shouldn't forget. It's the character. It could be, I don't know, 3D printing to go to the moon, but it is, is well, it's by space, some light or whatever. But what is the, the texture? What is the skin? It's very hard. We cannot miss it, because if not, it's like the slide I showed yesterday, Professor Duarte, where you have you know, uh, houses built by locals, houses prefabricated in a city in, in Brazil. Yeah, <clears throat> well, the city in Brazil is not only the forms, it's not only the built forms. The character is, is you have to admit that it's something that is very difficult to measure, but everybody can feel and you feel it. It was an experiment by, I didn't talk, uh, I forgot to mention, it was uh, these monkeys where you have to feed by a machine with wires, and the same machine with wires too, they feed, they, they drink the milk, but with a, covered by a textile. And all the monkeys at the end choose the same machine <coughs> with the textile, the same milk, because it's something there. Um, in all your in, in all your research that is very impressive um, very advanced <coughs> I think if in a way this could be a counterpoint you no know? a counterpoint and I say well we cannot forget the scheme <coughs> we cannot forget something that is very difficult to measure and very difficult to map but we all feel we all feel when we go to a chapel in granite small uh, it's, it's, it's quite fundamental. <clears throat> and when you have the advantage of, of living in a place like here, northern Portugal or Galicia, it's part of your <clears throat> your, your freedom. No? You were born with that. Um, but not only here. No? But I think <clears throat> from the NASA, <clears throat> maybe I have that knowledge. So, I don't know. But I think we cannot, how we can introduce that into all this <coughs> data, no? because if you forget it, you will forget something human. Mm? At the end, we'll have to choose between, probably between living a forest or living on Mars. <laughs> between living a forest or living on Mars. I don't know what I will choose. I don't think I will choose to live on Mars. <laughs> I know the forest can be risky. I don't know, you know the sun, the smell. And what is that? <laughs> 3D printing. Well, we cannot miss that. And it's what I want to. I don't want to make a statement. I just want to to give my experience. It's based pure praxis, trying to make something social. Eh? I don't want to try to make something for the media. I want to try to make public space for the people. Is there using the materials that are there and the economy is there? Nothing too sophisticated, but it's fundamental rooted and fundamental with character. And that is, is minor, but <laughs> has some impact. Small, but important. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for all this poetry made out of a stone. Thank you, Carlos.